All right, so our next lesson is lesson two, which is going to deal with the points and point objects inside of Civil 3D. We'll begin with a point overview, and then we'll get in and we'll take a look at the high level uh, or point, the point functionality within the user interface. We'll look at different methods for creating points, as well as take a look at the point styles and the point label styles. We'll then go through a lesson and actually import points from a file into the drawing. This is a little bit different than what we showed in the survey lesson because this doesn't put the points into a database, it actually puts them into the drawing. So there's a little bit difference in between those two points. We'll look at the point group definitions as well as point group sort order. And then we'll get into adding points into a survey database, unlocking survey points from the survey database, and also talking about the customizing the quick properties for the, the lesson of editing points as well as looking at point grips and then discuss point clouds. The point object itself is probably one of the, the most fundamental objects inside of Civil 3D. When we go out and we collect data in the field, that point represents some object out in the field, whether it's a ground shot, a sign, the center line of a stream, a tree. Um, well, that point, when it's brought into Civil 3D, whether it's created using the point creation tools or imported from a survey database or imported as a point file, it basically comes in as a point object. And you can see here that I have a bunch of points in the drawing. And this particular point is being displayed with a, a green cross a point number, an elevation, and a description. This green cross is what's known as the point style. All right, we probably refer to it as a symbol or a block or a point block. It's actually now in Civil 3D, it is a, a point, it's controlled through the point style. And we'll talk about point styles in a little bit. The text information is the point label style. So that information is controlled from the point label style itself. And we'll also talk about that and how to create point label styles. If you hover over a point, you'll see that it, it gives you a tooltip. Civil 3D pre presents you a tooltip that shows you more information about that point. It shows you what styles assigned to it, what descriptions assigned to it, what easting, what it's easting, northing, elevation, and, and then also what layer it's on. So that tooltip kind of gives you some additional information about that point that isn't apparent when you actually just look at the point object itself, depending on what styles are assigned or being displayed at that particular time. When the points come into the drawing in the prospector, they're shown under the points tree. So if I select that points tree, you can see that their points are all listed down below. I can do things like right click on a point and select zoom to, and it's gonna take me to that particular point, which in this case happens to be point number two. All right, it's also point 113. So I've got two points on top of one another. The next tree down is point groups. We're gonna talk about point groups in a little bit, but point groups allow you to come in and put these points into groups that then allow you to manipulate the style that's assigned to the point and the label style that's assigned to the point, and um, then also control some of the displaying options of the points themselves. Now, Looking at the points from a um, user inter interface perspective, to create and manipulate points, there is on the home tab, there is a points tool under the create ground data panel. If I select that, you can see that I've got an option here for point creation tools, but then I also have another um, series of menus that are down here that let me create points using different methods. And we'll get to that again here in a second. Um, you can create a point group. You can create Kogo points from a corridor. So if you have a corridor model, which we haven't discussed yet, but in the corridor section of the training, if you once you get through and you create a corridor, you can actually create points from that corridor and put them into the drawing. And you would do that for maybe construction stakeout purposes. There's also options of creating blocks from Kogo points. Um, so if you have this Kogo point object, this, this Civil 3D point object, and you want to turn it from a, a point style into a block, maybe to give to somebody who doesn't have Civil 3D, and you want to kind of dumb it down to a kind of a generic AutoCAD, then you could convert the blocks um, or the points into blocks from these Kogo points. 
You can also convert LAN desktop points. So if you have an old legacy drawing that you used, um, uh, that was done or created in LAN desktop, and you open that drawing inside of Civil 3D, you can use this command to actually convert those LAN desktop points into Civil 3D points. AutoCAD points, so there's an AutoCAD object. So like, like a line, there's actually an AutoCAD point. So if I come up to draw, there is this, this point object here. And that is a, uh, an actual, just an AutoCAD feature. And if you had a point in the drawing, that point can have a Z value to it. And it can have obviously a northing and easting because it's gonna have an X and a Y value. You can convert that point into a, uh, into a civil 3D point object using this command here. And then if you go way back and you have some soft desk point blocks, you can actually use the replace soft desk point blocks to convert those soft desk points into civil 3D point objects. Okay, so most of your points features are all from that point, um, that point drop down menu. So what we want to take a look at now is creating points. We'll take a look at some of the point creation methods. Um, now I already have some points in the drawing, but if you go up to the point dropdown and select point creation tools, it brings up a toolbar. And on that toolbar, you'll see that if I drop this down, that I have a whole bunch of different methods for creating points. Now, some of these methods are also the similar to the ones that you see here, like point, create points miscellaneous, intersections, alignments, surfaces, slopes, and interpolating points. If I come over here, these are all my basically create points, um, uh, what was that, miscellaneous, okay, so that's that first drop down. This next one here is the, you know, by direction or, or direction object. This one here is from an alignment. This one here is on a surface. This one here is by interpolating. And then this one here lets you actually create high low points. So it's kind of more of setting design points into the drawing. And then you've got this last one that actually is importing the points from a file. So if you had a text file to import, you would use this command here. On this chevron on the far right, lets you control the way the points get created when you bring them in. So you can see here I can set a default layer. I can set a point creation, um, the point creation methods, right? So if I wanted to prompt for an elevation or prompt for a description, I can set those values here. So it's set to manual, so it's gonna prompt me at the command line. If I set it to automatic and then set a default elevation, it will use that elevation and not prompt me at the command line for the elevation of the point, okay? So I'm gonna set this back to manual. And the same thing goes for the description is you can set it automatic or manual as well and set a default description. You can match, all right, on the description keys. So if you're using description keys, though what that does is if uh, you've got certain parameters um, that you're using, it'll manipulate the point, setting the, the style to it, so on and so forth. Um, but we're not gonna use that in, in this particular lesson. You can then also set up default styles, a default naming format, and also control the point identity, which tells it what's the next point number, what number to offset it, whether you want it sequentially. If you don't want it to prompt you for a number, um, then the use sequential numbering would be set to true. But if I want it to prompt me for a number, I would set this to false. So that way the command line will ask me what the next point number is. Right now the next point number is 375, and it's gonna sequence by one, um, a value of one and give, you know, as I create points. So you can control that by expanding or collapsing the chevron. So basically creating the points is just choosing the method for creating the point that you want. So if I want to do the manual, which is probably the simplest way, I would select that command and it says specify location for the point. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to pick a point right there. It's then going to ask me for a description of the point. So maybe this is a, um, a ground shot. So I'm going to just enter G for ground. And it's asking me then for an elevation. So again, I'm keying in what that elevation might be. Let's say it's an elevation of a thousand. And I press enter. And now you can see that it's created that point, 357, which was the next point number. The elevation gets assigned to it. And then G gets assigned to it for that particular um, description. Now, the point itself 
is um, if we look at the the properties of it, you can see that it's um, it shows it's on layer by the default of V po uh, point. It's uh, colors by layer. All right, the description format's not set. It's a survey point, and it shows up in currently right now is what's called the all points point group. All right, we'll talk about point groups in just a few moments. But that's basically you know creating the point, and you can select it and delete that point. Other methods, um, you can do a geodetic distance direction or direction and distance. You can do a resection. Um, so you know I'm not going to go through all these different methods. They're they're pretty much self-explanatory, or you know basically just go through trial and error. Um, if you had a line, some of the other ones that I use, what I would say quite a bit. So let's say that I had a line in my drawing. I could come in here and I could say that I want to put points along that line or curve. Um, I can divide the line, uh, measure the line. I can put them at polyline vertices. Um, and I, again, I can convert the points to um, blocks or uh, point objects. So if I say vertices and we'll just go manual, it's going to ask me for a default elevation. So let's say I set that to a, a thousand and then select the polyline object. And now it's asked me for a description. So I'm just going to put in FC for a fence. Okay. And what it's doing is it's put the next one. And you notice the numbers 358. Um, I'm going to choose that description. And you can see that it's defaulting to the elevation and setting it along this polyline. And I'm just hitting enter. And you can see it's sequentially numbering it going up. If I wanted to change the description, I could. But I'm just going to enter through that. And now I've got points along that polyline that are you know created into the drawing okay some other methods here like this one is doing the direction distance uh distance perpendicular direction object all right in all the years that i've been using civil 3d i, I would use these when i'm trying to do boundary comp so if you're not doing boundary comps from a survey aspect um you know these methods may not get used that much um, to be honest with you, the majority of the ones I use would be manual. Um, you know, maybe some of these are long lines if I'm stake, setting stakeout points uh, along polyline and vertices and, you know, so on. Most of the points that are being created, obviously, are created from collected field data. So another one that I may use quite a bit is this one. Now, we have to have an alignment on this tool or to use this tool. And what this will do is it'll set points at a particular station and offset from the alignment. Um, you can divide the alignment, measure the alignment, set it at the geometry points of the alignment. So you actually have to have a civil 3D alignment object to use these particular point creation tools. So again, in the lesson on alignments, because we haven't talked about alignments yet, I would go to that alignment, uh, learn how to create the alignment first, and then you could come back and, and use these tools and apply them to create points along that alignment. This method here, we would have to have a surface. We're going to talk about surfaces next. Um, again, once we have a surface, what this will do is it'll set the points either randomly where you select or based on a grid or using like that polyline I drew a second ago, it will set the points along that polyline, but the elevation is going to come from the surface object in the drawing. So you have to have a surface object to use these particular tools.